If you're watching this, you're probably new to the Raspberry Pi. Upon getting it, it can be really confusing on what to do next and where to go. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to set up the Raspberry Pi headless. This process has been streamlined over the past few years and is now easier than ever. I'm going to be setting it up without a monitor or a keyboard on my laptop. So without further ado, let's get right to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is grab your micro SD card. This is where we're going to be installing our operating system for the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi Imager, which can be found on the raspberrypi.org website. I'll be putting a link to this in the description below. So after you've downloaded the Raspberry Pi Imager, you can choose your operating system with many different options. I'm only choosing the recommended Raspberry Pi operating system, which will install software as well that's recommended for the Raspberry Pi. You can also use other operating systems such as Ubuntu or even a custom image such as a Raspbian stretch file from two years ago. But for me, I'm just going to choose the recommended Raspberry Pi operating system. Then you can plug in your SD card. And now you should be able to see the mass storage device on your computer. And then just hit the right. And I'll be right back when this is done. When the right finishes to your Raspberry Pi, you can now take your SD card out of your computer. Unfortunately, you're going to have to plug it right back in. Sorry about that. Now what we have to do, so first we can go to files and check if all the operating system files are now on our SD card. And you can see that they are. So you take the letter that's at the end of your SD card and open a command prompt. So type the letter that's at the end of your SD card. I have E, so I'm going to type E colon. So we're going to have to create an SSH file. This will allow us to connect remotely to our Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, SSH is disabled by default, so you have to create one manually. On Windows, you can just use copy type null greater than sign SSH. Now to check that it's been written, type dir, and you can see ssh right here. Or if you want to, you can also check in files. Reload, and you can see ssh right here. Another thing we're going to have to do is create a WPA supplicant file. This allows our Raspberry Pi to connect to Wi-Fi. So the link to this uh, website will be found in the description. It's another raspberrypi.org, and you have to copy this script right here. You can put this into a text editor, I'm using notepad++, and just paste. And then first type out your country code. I'm living in the United States, so I'm just going to type US. Then you can type in your uh, network name, which is your Wi-Fi name, or your, and then your password as well. Or if you don't have one, just leave that empty. And then just save, control S, and save to your micro SD card. But for the name, it has to be WPA underscore supplicant dot C-O-N-F or conf. Then just save. And now you can eject your micro SD card for real. But make sure you use the safely remove hardware button. Or it might cause some damage. Oh, sorry. If it's still in use, then make sure you just exit it out of it from the command line. And now you can eject it. And now you can remove your micro SD card safely. And now let's, I'll be right back and we're going to be SSHing into our Raspberry Pi. After writing all your necessary files, you want to take your SD card and put it into your SD card slot on the Raspberry Pi, which is right here. And after doing that, you can power on the Raspberry Pi and it will boot up with all the necessary files. And it'll also connect your network with the WPA su supplicant file I gave. So after doing that, you can power on your Raspberry Pi. After doing so, you can now SSH with the default Pi user. So SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi. And if you get this remote host identification error, this only comes if your Raspberry Pi has previously been logged on to with the same 
user. So to solve this issue, just do a del dot ssh. Yes. And now I'll do the same thing again. And you get this message type yes. And the default password should be Raspberry Pi. Keep in mind, you're not going to be able to see this while you type it. And now you've successfully SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Now to view the desktop interface, we're going to use the VNC Viewer app. The link to this download can be found in the description. On the Raspberry Pi, just type VNC Server. This will generate a private key for us. You can then copy the IP address given here with the colon and the number at the end. On Windows, just do a right click to copy in the command prompt. And then just paste into VNC Viewer, enter, and it should successfully connect. There we go. And here you can do all your configuration, all the stuff you want to do. You can set your country, your language, your time zone, and all sorts of stuff. If you want, you can also do this on the Raspberry Pi. The main thing to do here, I recommend, is changing your password. So the default Pi and Raspberry password is definitely not very secure. So type in sudo raspi config. And here you should get all the different options such as change user password, network options, also interfacing, and all sorts of stuff. And when you're done, just hit finish. And good job. You successfully SSH'd and viewed the desktop interface of your Raspberry Pi. Good job and good luck for your future projects. Bye.